Hey Ari Avengers, how are you guys doing? So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I was feeling a little bored and I was like, you know what? Let me just like make a video that's just quick and easy and fun just for the fuck of it, you know? And I realized I hadn't jumped on the trend of making a tier list yet. So I made a tier list. Did I say that right? Tier list? Yeah, tier list. Okay, yeah. So I was like, let me jump on the trend of making a tier list video. So I thought it'd be fun to rank the Infinity Saga movies. So I have my little tier list right here. Let me go over the tiers that I made for them. So first we have Survives the Thanos Snap. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Like it's just so good Thanos couldn't even take it out, you know? Like look at the people who survived the Thanos Snap. You know, you had Tony, you had Captain, you had fucking Black Widow. You know, you had all the, all the ringers. If they survived the Thanos snap, they're a ringer within the Infinity Saga. Next we have, I don't want to go. This is what Spider-Man says to Tony right before he Everybody knows that scene. It was emotional. It struck a chord. And even though it might have been a small part, it stuck with everyone once it left the theater. It's pretty on par with Survives the Thanos Snap, but it was it it made an impact just a smaller one so that's why we have it here in the second tier normally tier lists do have i believe like five categories but i felt like i could boil it down to four so i deleted the the third category and we just went straight on to her now her for those who haven't watched arrested development is a person or in this case a movie that is just so forgettable that no matter how many times you've seen it you know it's there you know it exists but when somebody mentions it you're just like her you know and then the last one is glitter and this is because of the movie starring mariah carey called glitter now I've never even seen Glitter. I've seen bits and pieces and I've seen movie reviews, but I don't need to watch it to know it's a dumpster fire. So anything that ends up in Glitter, just know everything that shines isn't always golden. Sometimes it's Glitter. I'm gonna do them in order of theatrical release. So we'll start with Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1, you know, it kicks everything off. I am Iron Man. In all honesty, I think just because it's the start of everything and I just have so much nostalgia for it, I'm gonna put it in Survives the Thanos Snap. Okay, next after Iron Man is The Incredible Hulk. Now, this is The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. I think we can be kind of honest with ourselves. There's a reason we never gave Mark Ruffalo an actual Hulk movie on his own. So I'm going to put it in her. You know, we know it exists, but whenever somebody brings it up, it's just like, oh yeah, there was a Hulk movie, huh? Next is going to be Iron Man 2. Really, we went straight from Iron Man to the Incredible Hulk to Iron Man 2? Well, that seems kind of quick, no? I mean, I guess uh, that's a little surprising to me. Let's see, where is it at? Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2, where are you? Um, yo, where the fuck is it? There it is, Iron Man 2. Okay, Iron Man 2. This is where Tony kinda has like, he kinda falls back into like his playboy ways. I do believe this is when Black Widow was also introduced to the franchise, but she wasn't really introduced as the Natasha Romanoff that we know her to be at the end of the Infinity Saga. She's kinda just like a like hot Russian chick. I believe even when Tony sees her for the first time, his first words are, I want one, which I mean, didn't we all? It wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't good. I think we're going to go with her. Next is Thor. Now, I might be a little biased of Thor because personally, it's like one of my favorite movies. And I just, I love Thor, you know, like Thor was like my favorite Avenger for the longest since Adventures of Babysitting. It's not the best, but I'm going to have to go with I don't want to go. It was just good enough to make an impact, but it, it didn't survive the Thanos snap just quite. Next is going to be Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, I am actually in the military myself. I've been in for, it's going to be 10 years in September that I've served in the military. Captain America, the first Avenger, it really resonates with me. You know, he's, he's patriotic, you know, man, the guy tried to enlist even when he was in 
ineligible, and that is so me. It didn't survive the Thanos snap, but I will say I'm gonna put it in I don't wanna go. I also love the 1940s. We got to see Tony Stark's dad when he was young. We got to see Peggy Carter, and we got to see what's what's the guy? What's what's his name? The one from from Men in Black, Tommy Tommy Lee, is it Tommy Lee Jones? Tommy Lee Jones, I was right. <laughs> so yeah, Captain America, I don't wanna go. Next is going to be, ooh, the first Avengers movie. I saw the Avengers in theaters. I saw, actually, I'm pretty sure I saw almost every single one of these movies in theaters. I loved how everyone was brought together. Tony and Captain and Thor, like all cross paths, like that scene where they're like arguing with each other in the woods. Doth mother know? You wear as her drape. It made moves. It made moves. Uh, it survives the Thanos snap. 100% survives the Thanos snap. After the Avengers is Iron Man 3. I remember my boyfriend at the time, I went to go see Iron Man 3 with him and his family, I think, maybe I'm remembering that wrong, but I remember having a debate with his dad and his dad was like, I didn't like Iron Man 3, like Tony's weak and he's like this, this and that. And I'm just like, he has PTSD, sir? Like, he literally almost got sucked into a wormhole at the end of Avengers and almost died while holding a nuke. He's allowed to be a little bit stressed when he's got to be called back into work. And let's not forget, Iron Man 3 has that hilarious back and forth scene with Pepper Potts and Tony at the beginning of the movie. Can't protect you out there. Oh, is, I challenge. Is that normal? Sadly, Yes, that, this is normal. Oh. It's very normal. It's, it's a big normal. bunny. Relax about it. Too funny. Too funny. Ooh, Barrel of Monkeys, Iron Man 3, survives the Thanos snap. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Fight me, bitch. Thor the Dark World. <laughs> Bitch, do you even have to pretend? Bitch, it's glitter. Get the fuck out of here. It's fucking glitter. <laughs> it's barely glitter, but it, it's there. Uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. We don't even gotta talk about it. It survives the Thanos snap. Bitch, this ain't even a debate. God placed it there, okay? It's just that good. And I think we're all forgetting that it should be number one just for this. Yeah, this image right here of Scarlett Johansson is why this movie survives the Thanos snap. This is her promotional poster for Captain America the Winter Soldier. Are you kidding me? Bitch, stunning. I'm bisexual, I know these things. It survives the Thanos snap for this picture and this picture alone, all right? I ain't got nothing else to say about it. Okay, next after the Winter Soldier is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Let me see, where are you on the tier list? Here you are, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. We don't even have to talk about it, 100% it survives the Thanos snap. Guardians of the Galaxy was the first Marvel movie that brought so much humor. It honestly led with humor first and the severity of the actual story second. It was just so good, it was so funny, and it. but it still made you feel something. It still knew when to take itself seriously, and I feel like the, the balance that they found in Guardians of the Galaxy is something that the MCU really struggles with now. I feel like they should take a look back at this film and how they did this and how they handled this and talk to James Gunn because, my God, the man knew what he was doing when he wrote this. I don't know. I, I just, I really loved this, this film so much. 100% it survives the Thanos snap. Next is going to be Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, listen. Avengers Age of Ultron was was a good film. Um, I remember seeing it in theaters, however, and I am not going to hold you guys. I fell asleep. Now, I was also really sick, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it as well. But, like, I fell asleep, you know? Um, so I don't really know what to do with that. I have seen it since then, and I do think it is a good film. I just... In all honesty, I don't really remember that much about it. I, I remember James Spader as Ultron, and I think that was phenomenal. Like, he did great in the role, and I think James Spader has the perfect voice for that. Like, are you kidding me, bro? You don't even know my real name. I'm the Lizard King. He did that shit. But, ah, uh, I, I hate to tell you guys, and I know some people are gonna disagree with me, but I think I gotta put it in her, because... Who? You know, like, like I forget the Age of Ultron was a thing sometimes. Like, if it wasn't for James Spader playing Ultron, honestly, this movie, I wouldn't even really recollect it that much. 
again, this is just my opinion. Don't fight with me, because I don't care. <laughs> Ant-Man. Now, Ant-Man, for sure, I am biased because I like Paul Rudd, okay? I really like Paul Rudd. I've had a crush on him since Clueless. I think he just, he's gorgeous. The man doesn't age. And I can't put him in anything less than I don't want to go because the man made an impact on me. It wasn't the biggest one, no pun intended, you know, because he's an ant man. Like, <laughs> it wasn't the biggest one, you know, because he's an ant. <laughs> but he made an impact nonetheless. So, yeah, we're going to put him in I don't want to go. After Ant Man is Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War was to comic book lovers and like Marvel lovers what. Breaking Bad Part 1 was to Twilight Stands. The only difference is the epic battles that happen in both these movies, Marvel delivered. Like, they actually gave us the fight we fucking wanted to see. And you know what else they gave us? They gave us the introduction of Spidey. They gave us the introduction of Tom Holland into the Spider-Verse. Ooh, into the Spider-Verse, bitch. I'm cross-contaminating here. No, they gave us Tom Holland into the MCU. That doesn't sound as cool, but whatever. It it survives the Thanos snap. Like, I mean, what can I say? Next is Doctor Strange. Now, Benedict Cumberbatch, I had not heard much about him prior to this film, which is shocking to me because he's actually like super huge even before he ever did Doctor Strange. Like he was like a renowned actor. So Doctor Strange was my first introduction to him. And honestly, I think he did a great job. I did like Doctor Strange a lot, but I feel like where it lost me was with Dormammu being like the villain. While I thought it was comical how he took him out, you know, like, like how it constantly kept showing him like Dormammu, I've come to bargain, you know, like that shit was funny as fuck. However, I just felt like by this point within the MCU, the movies were kind of starting to get and feel formulaic. So we're gonna put Doctor Strange in I Don't Wanna Go. I felt something, but I didn't feel enough for it to survive a Thanos snap. Next, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I don't really have much to say about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, I. You know, I, if anything, I think one of the biggest things that I liked about it was the fact that I got to see and relive a young Kurt Russell. I don't know, I like Kurt Russell, he's hot. So getting to relive his youth with that CGI was actually pretty excellent. However, I am gonna put it in her because I just don't like, I don't know that I could ask people about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and they're gonna be able to recall shit like point by point. You know, like they'll know that Kurt Russell was like his dad or whatever and he ended up being the bad guy. But like aside from that, like how much do you really remember about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? I'll give you a second. That's what I thought, bitch. You don't remember anything. Nobody does. Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, Spider-Man Homecoming is our first feature film where Tom Holland is carrying. But is he really carrying? Because Tony Stark was in this quite a bit. I think you guys know it's not surviving the Thanos snap. It's gonna go in I don't wanna go. Because it definitely made an impact. I feel like the biggest scene in that movie that stuck with me was when Tony took his suit away and he's trapped under that rubble at the end and he's gotta like, even if I don't have the suit, I'm still Spider-Man. Like I can do this, you know? And he just busts out of that rumble and he, j you know, he does the damn thing. And I fucking love that scene. Like it was just so beautiful and like motivational. And not to mention the twist, Michael Keaton being the girl that Peter's got a crush on, being her dad, Ooh, me and my brother, when we saw that, jaws on the floor. Next after Spider-Man Homecoming is Thor Ragnarok. Now, this was the third Thor film in the Infinity Saga franchise. And let's just call it how it is. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 walked so that Thor Ragnarok could fucking run, bitch. This has to be like top three, my, my favorite movies within the Infinity Saga. Like Thor Ragnarok, I could just watch it over and over and over and over again. Like I love Tessa Thompson. I love Mark Ruffalo. I love, obviously I love Chris Hemsworth. Like I said, at this point in time when Thor Ragnarok came out, Thor was still my favorite Avenger. So I really love that. And this is when they really started to play into Chris Hemsworth 
Hemsworth's comedic timing, which I think was a great move. Um, unfortunately, they did go a little too far with Love and Thunder, but Thor Ragnarok, mwah, phenomenal. And on top of that, this was also... Uh, this also had some great acting from Tom Hiddleston and Jeff Goldblum. Like, Thor Ragnarok, it survives the Thanos snap, bitch. Like, there's no two ways about it. Black Panther. Black Panther... Now listen, I... When I do this, I am going to remove as far as I can my blackness out of this decision. I'm making this call not as... A black woman or a woman of color I'm making this call as a Marvel fan I gotta put it there you guys like I I, I get what Black Panther did for the culture but in all honesty it's a pretty subpar MCU film the fighting was like lackluster how easy T'Challa was taken down. He goes down that easy, bro. Killmonger, I will say, was a phenomenal villain. His motivations were there. He had a motive and an agenda that made sense and that was even conflicting. Like, there was a lot of nuance there. I will say Killmonger was probably the only redeeming thing about this. However, I just can't... Maybe Glitter's a little harsh. It's not forgettable, so I can't... It, like, it's not even that, like, it's good, it's just forgettable. Glitter might be harsh, but... That's where I stand. Avengers Infinity War. Um, bitch don't even talk to me. That's fucking survives the Thanos snap. It's so good. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, glitter. Just glitter. I know I said with Captain America that, you know, because he's in the military, it really like resonates with me and everything. Well, Captain Marvel or Carol Danvers is actually a pilot in the Air Force and I'm actually in the Air Force. And um, I got to tell you, as a woman in the Air Force, going to watch a woman in the Air Force, granted, I'm not a, I'm not a pilot, but she didn't resonate with me that much and I'm gonna have to put her in glitter. It wasn't necessarily bad, but just what I thought it was gonna be, it just wasn't. I guess because I am in the Air Force and I, like I'm, I am a woman in the military and in the Air Force specifically, you know, women have struggles and women have like things that they overcome and women have emotions and carol danvers had none of those things like it just seemed like she was just great at everything you know and that wasn't really realistic and it didn't really resonate with me and kind of just made me feel like damn like i suck or something which obviously i don't suck they just wrote an impossible what do you call them i think they're called mary sue's a Mary Sue is an unrealistically capable and virtuous character, one who simply lacks flaws and is depicted in an overly positive light. Yes, that is Carol Danvers. End game. Okay, end game. End game. I'm conflicted. I mean, we know it's going to be top, either survives the Thanos snap or I don't want to go, but ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, mmm. I think we're gonna put it in I don't wanna go. Not because it didn't have the impact or because it had like a small impact. It had impact, it had weight. I, I just can't explain it. It's just, it's I don't wanna go, it's I don't wanna go. And then I forgot that Far From Home was within the Infinity Saga, but I'm gonna be honest, Far From Home, ah, mm, uh, uh, her, her. I think because it was the first film to come after, you know, we closed out Steve Rogers and Tony Stark and, you know, so many of like the heavy hitters stories. It, it was just, it was a really, it would have been hard for any film to follow Endgame. And because of that, just her. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just her, you know? But, Anyways, guys, this is my ranking. This is what I have. If you guys agree with any of them, let me know. If you guys disagree with any of them, let me know. I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of hate for Black Panther, but 
I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm, I just gotta be, I gotta keep it real. I was a Marvel fan before I even realized I was black, bro. I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that one, but I don't really care. It is what it is for me. I just wanted to give you guys like a quick little video, something to throw out in between filming like the longer movies. Let me know if you guys like these videos. I might make more. You just gotta give me topics that you would wanna see me rank and I'll for sure do them. Maybe I'll do a ranking of like the Star Wars movies as I get through them. Thank you so much to everybody who's been watching my videos so far. I appreciate your guys' patience. I know I suck at getting things filmed and editing and getting it all up, but I need you guys to understand it is just me and I still work a full-time job and I am a procrastinator. I am lazy, you guys. So just, just bear with me. The, the videos drop when the videos drop, I promise you. I get them out to you as soon as I feel like it. So yeah. If you guys want to leave a comment on what you agree or disagree on, please leave it down below. Like, subscribe, and come back later. Are you Avengers? Disassemble.